Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 6 of our human resource management course. Today in this course we will delve into the intricacies of optimizing the individual and team performance. We will also try to explore the various strategies to motivate the employees at work, to get them going, to enhance their productivity at work and overall their organizational success. So let us embark on this journey to understand the art and science of what performance management is all about. So today's session is basically about performance management and uh, we will explore various facets of performance management. For example, we will be talking about the introduction to performance management, we will talk about the importance of performance management, uh, the key components of performance management, the best practices in the area of performance management. Then we are going to talk about one very critical aspect of business, performance appraisal. And last but not the least, we will try to figure out what all performance appraisal methods are there and we will try to explain, we will try to understand the various methods of performance appraisal. So basically, we will start with the definition of performance management. Performance management is a strategic and systematic process within an organization that involves planning, monitoring, reviewing and developing an individual's or team performance to ensure that the organizational goals and objectives are met efficiently and effectively. So basically it is a very, very comprehensive approach which goes much beyond just the annual performance reviews. At some point of time, at one point of time, people used to think and they used to have a very traditional view of performance, ma performance management and they often confused performance management with the performance appraisal alone. But at today's time, annual performance review is just one aspect of it. Rather, the aim is to optimize the individual and collective contributions towards the organizational success. So we will try to understand how it looks, how it unfolds and what all aspects are supposed to be understood in context of it. Now we move to the significance of performance management. In today's era, it is very important for us to understand what is the importance of performance management. The very first importance of performance management lies in goal alignment. So performance management aligns the employee efforts with the overall goals and strategies of the organizations. So the idea is to ensure that the individual efforts in the organizations are aligned well with the goals and strategic strategies of the organization. By this we mean that the idea is to align the employees efforts, individual efforts and team efforts with the strategic intent of the organization. So it ensures that every employee understands what are the expectations from that employee and they also understand what are they supposed to meet. So by setting the clear expectations, employees can see how they can work directly towards the organization's goals and directly contribute towards the organizational success. Then is feedback and improvement. So these days feedback is an integral part of the performance management. Performance management establishes a structured framework for providing continuous feedback to the employees because the idea is not just to evaluate the performance of an individual at a certain point of time but to manage the performance of an individual. 
it's about continuously bringing about some kind of improvement in the overall performance level of the organizations of the individuals first to ensure that the organizational success and organizational goals are met so feedback and improvement is definitely a very very important aspect of it so by means of performance management you know some kind of uh, structured framework is set by taking into consideration and by providing some kind of continuous feedback to the people so that they know what is expected out of them and where are they lacking what are the gray areas that they need to work upon then ensuring that there is a structured mechanism for coaching the employees mentoring the employees and above all identifying the areas of improvement so this is why it's important for us to manage the performance of the employees then at the helm of it lies strategic growth also so performance management allows the organizations to adapt to changing business environment so as we are very well aware of the fact that the business environment is really very very dynamic and to cope up with the changes that are happening in the environment it's very important to upskill our employees it's important to keep a track of how employees are performing it's important to make sure that the efforts of employees are in line with the objectives of the organizations also so definitely this particular thing will help in achieving the strategic growth as well it ensures that the workforce is agile it's capable of change you know taking the new challenges that come their way and also it ensures that the organization is making sure that the individual are, individuals are constantly learning and developing to the fullest potential of theirs after this the next very important aspect is resource optimization so what do you understand by resource optimization by ensuring that the you know performance of the individuals is evaluated on regular basis on continuous basis and addressing the issues promptly performance management definitely ensures that the resources are optimized and thus contribute towards the overall organizational efficiency and success so uh, this was basically about the importance of performance management i hope by now you have a fair understanding of uh, why performance appraisal is important i think you must be aware of n number of organizations putting in a lot of emphasis on understanding the performance level of employees and they are putting in a lot of efforts towards making sure that the organization is able to reach its potential through the employees so now, now we move towards the next aspect of it the third thing that we are going to discuss in today's class and it's about key components of performance management so what do you understand by aligning the we've been talking about components of uh, performance management we've been talking about you know the importance of uh, compens uh, you know performance management so now we are going to talk about various aspects and various components which are integ integral to the performance management of employees we'll start with the first aspect or first component which is about goal setting performance management is all about aligning the performance of employees <coughs> with the overall organizational goals and organizational goals and strategies so it's about closely intertwining with the organizational goals and strategies so here's how we actually uh, take a note of it and make sure that the goals are set for example 
one of the important components can be in terms of setting the clear objectives. Individuals must be aware of what are the key performance indicators for them. They need to know about what is expected out of them. They are expected to be knowing something related to key result areas also. So, if they are aware of the key areas, they are aware of the key result areas, they are aware of the key performance indicators right in the beginning itself they would be better aware of what is expected out of them and they can work towards satisfying those objectives. So, this alignment ensures that every employee is contribute towards the larger interest of the organization, towards the larger mission of the organization. Then second aspect of goal setting can be in terms of strategic KPIs. So, what are KPIs? Key performance indicators in performance management process are chosen based on their relevance to the organization's strategic objectives. For example, organization's strategy involving the expansion into the new markets may have certain KPIs. If the organization intends to expand it into new markets, then the KPIs of employees can be in terms of focusing on market penetration. Second KPI can be in form of customer acquisition. Another one can be in terms of product development. I will just tell you about what do they mean. So, basically if organization intends to expand itself into the new markets then it will have to work on certain KPIs which are very Im instrumental in shaping the success for the organization. Now, what can they be? They can be market penetration. By market penetration, we mean that the organization takes some such kind of strategies or makes some such kind of strategies which enable it to enter into the already existing market. So, they already have some share in the market, but they really want to deeply penetrate into the market. So, the KPIs for employees can be aligned to this particular thing and one of the KPIs could be market penetration. Another uh, KPI could be in terms of customer acquisition. Certainly, by means of uh, expanding its market or uh, by saying that we want to expand into the new markets, we are really interested in acquiring the new sets of customers. So, when we aim at acquiring the new sets of customers, this certainly will contribute towards the expansion into the new markets. Because even if we are interested in getting into the already existing market or we want to deeply penetrate into the already existing market, then also customer acquisition is the key towards making it happen. Another KPI could be in form of thinking on the lines of coming up with a new product, coming up with a new product and this is how they can think of penetrating the already existing market or maybe they can think of on some other lines. So, such kind of KPIs may be made for the employees. This will make it very, very clear to the employees and they will also have those KPIs in mind before getting into their work and understanding the process. Now, goal setting also help in adaptation to change. As an organization's goals and strategies evolve, the performance management provides a framework for revising individual and team objectives to the employees. So, this is how you know adaptation to change also happens as a part of performance management. Then another aspect of goal setting could be in terms of resource allocation. Performance management can guide the resource allocation also ensuring that the organization invests in those areas which are of the highest importance and which will have the most significant impact on achieving the strategic objectives of the organization. So, this way you know effective performance management can smoothen the entire process of achieving the objectives of the organization. So, this was about you know goal setting. Next we move to feedback and recognition. So, basically by means of 
providing the constructive feedback to the employees, they can really improve on the already existing, existing systems which they have been following. And they can also improve upon the kind of work they are delivering or the kind of quality which they deliver. So, feedback is certainly an important component of performance management. And from time to time, the organizations have to devise different kinds of policies, strategies and action plans to make sure that the employees are happy and satisfied within the organization and they are contributing their level best. And research studies have proved the fact that, the, that if the employees are given the constructive feedback to work on the areas for their improvement, then certainly they are more motivated and also satisfied with the performance they are exhibit in the organizations. Then we move to the other aspect of it which is performance appraisal. In the slides to come, we are going to discuss this particular aspect in detail, but for now it is important for us to understand what is performance appraisal. So you need to understand what performance appraisal really mean. By performance appraisal, we mean that we evaluate the performance of an individual with respect to a particular job that he is given. So, as I just mentioned, some kind of goal setting is done to the people, for the people. They are given some kind of key performance indicators. They are aware of what the key performance indicators are. They are also aware of the key result areas which they are supposed to be a part of. And by establishing these things well in advance and making sure that the smart objectives are put in place to the individuals, which would mean the specific measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. So, if we are ensuring that such kind of things are put in place in the organization, then certainly people will be more particular about giving the best of their performance. And Performance appraisal is about evaluating the performance of an individual with respect to a particular job that he performs. So, it is about performance appraisal though in HR we have n number of other things evolving these days. You know HR goes more beyond performance management itself goes much beyond more beyond you know performance appraisal alone. Today we are focusing on something called as performance management and also we are focusing on something called as potential assessment which means that we are not just interested in evaluating the performance of an individual with respect to a particular job that he performs, but we take into consideration that just in case an individual cannot perform or could not perform some specific task due to the reason which may be attributed to his work life balance, which may be attributed to his stress level, which may be attributed to n number of uh, circumstances, but then if he possesses that potential within himself, then he needs to be you know evaluated on the basis of potential also. So, many of the organizations which are focusing a lot on performance management of employees and not just interested in reducing the number of manpower or uh, removing the manpower because of the reason that they are not able to perform well, the organizations are stressing on something called as potential appraisal also. So, this is also an integral part of the performance management. Next we move to the uh, last aspect or last key component of performance management which primarily talks about development. So, the idea is to develop the potential of employees. In the previous lectures, wherein we talked about training and development, the message was very clear that development is something which is career oriented in nature. So, looking at today's scenario and the changing career attitudes of people also, we have seen, in fact many of the researchers say that people are more career oriented in nature. They are not just interested in sticking to a particular job, rather they are interested in developing their career. They are, they are open to exploring new possibilities, they are open to exploring many of the new career opportunities that come their way. And certainly if they are looking at those uh, opportunities that come their way, you know development becomes of paramount importance. 
So, what they are actually looking at? They are looking for their own career development, they are looking for their own holistic development. So, we need to see how the changing needs of people have to be aligned with the performance management system of the organization. And definitely there are whole host of organizations which have truly benefited by ensuring that the performance management is put in place and they are benefited out of it. Now, this was all about the key components of performance management. Now, I think uh, by now you have a fair understanding of what what is the significance of performance management, why is it important to develop the potential of employees, why is it important to uh, develop the employees by focusing on certain skill areas, certain knowledge uh, abilities of individuals and uh, we need to also think on the lines of including certain activities like training, coaching, mentoring, you know providing them the with the adequate career opportunities providing with the adequate uh, providing them with the adequate uh, educational opportunities you know which go more beyond just honing their skills for a particular job they perform so organizations have to focus on all these areas because they have to make their employees capable of taking the new challenges that come their way so these are some of the components which have to work in tandem within the performance management process to ensure that the employees are constantly performing their level best and they are very very clear on their objectives they are very very clear on uh, you know what would they be evaluated on they are aware of the fact that you know they are going to be evaluated in a very fair and transparent manner and also have opportunities for growth and development so when effectively implemented these components contribute towards optimizing the performance of individuals as well as the teams and therefore they you know they can really work towards the organizational goals and strategies now uh, we have we've taken up certain aspects of performance management now let's try to understand the critical realm of performance management and delve deeper into the area by understanding a specific case that i've brought before you today so basically this is a case about an organization which was having certain issues related to the performance management in the organization they were not able to manage the performance of their employees really well so in uh, today's lecture we're going to talk about the various challenges which were faced by this organization in terms of its performance management process and we'll try to understand what are the consequences of the challenges and their impact on the organization and in the third segment we are going to talk about the analysis of the same. So basically when we talk about the challenges of uh, this company which was facing some issues related to performance management in the organization, now let us look at some of the challenges which was being faced by them. The very first was the unclear expectations. The organization expected a lot of things from its employees but they were not aware of the you know they 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 never communicated it clearly to their employees so there was lack in clarity there was a lack in specificity and measurable measurability of the goals which were given to the employees so basically this kind of ambiguity actually resulted in some kind of confusion and frustration certainly it happens when you are not aware of what are the expectation of the other party from you you are not able to perform as per their standards so it is the responsibility of the organization to clearly communicate the expectations to their employees and ensure that there is no ambiguity involved in it because it can really lead to a lot of confusion among the people and this can probably you know uh, develop into some kind of frustration among them as well so this was one of the uh, few challenges which were faced by the organization the second thing was related to inconsistent feedback the company lacked a structured feedback system management 
rarely provided regular and constructive feedback to its employees. So, they were not providing them the regular feedback and ha at the heart of all successful organization, you know, lies this important aspect. In this slide to come, I will be taking a few examples of some of the organizations which have successfully, you know, implemented the performance management processes in their organizations and you see what is the role of feedback in it, what is the role of, you know, evaluating the performance from time to time of the individuals. So, this organization was facing a lot of issues related to inconsistent feedback. As a result, the employee did not have clear understanding of what is expected out of them and they did not have a clear understanding of their strengths and areas that needed improvement. So, at times it becomes very important for the organization to let people know about what their strengths are and to acknowledge them to reward them for what they are good at. Then is bureaucratic appraisal process. The performance appraisal process at this company was overly bureaucratic, then it was very very time consuming and it lacked transparency also. So, the individuals themselves thought and they found that they were not being accurately, you know, appraised and evaluated and the appraisals did not accurately reflect their actual performances at work and the contribution which they are making for the organization. Last challenge was something related to lack of development opportunities. So, again this organization was unable to understand the needs of the people and it was uh, unable to understand the reason of weakened psychological contract which is a kind of unsaid contract which happens between the employer and employee. Though they were able to see that such kind of psychological contract is weakening, but they were not able to understand the reasons why it was weakening. And one of the probable reasons why they were not able to manage the performance well was the fact that they never thought on the lines of providing adequate career opportunities and development opportunities for the people. They were just interested in making sure that the individuals perform their level best for the role they are performing and for the job they are doing. So, there were limited opportunities for people for skill building, there were limited opportunities for people for training, there were limited opportunities for people for employee development which further led to a lot of stagnation among employees and uh, this led to disengagement from work also. So, this was the second reason uh, you know this was uh, these were few of the challenges which were faced. Let me reiterate it, it is lack of development opportunities for people, bureaucratic appraisal process they did not have a very stringent and uh, very transparent clear transparent at least the perception of people was not such for the kind of performance appraisal process which they were following. So, these were few of the challenges which were being faced by this organization. Next we move to the various consequences of these challenges. Now, what did it lead to? This entire scenario led to the decreased, this led to the decreased motivation level of employees. The people started feeling less motivated because they were not aware of what is expected out of them. They had limited feedback. They did not find that the organization was actually taking care of them. Uh, so, the organization started feeling a little demotivated, they were refraining from doing a lot of work, there was a lot of reluctance and it uh, significantly impacted their job satisfaction level also. And uh, finally, they were less committed to the organization, you know, uh, the organization stopped showing some kind of citizenship behavior at work, they were never ready to go beyond the call of duty, you know, leave apart the call of duty, they were not even uh, ready to take up those things which were actually a part of their duty because they were not uh, feeling that their working is being acknowledged. Now, the second consequence was high turnover. There was a lot of unrest among employees and this led to high employee turnover. Since the appra appraisal systems were not very clear and transparent and you know, there was some kind of bureaucracy also involved in some kind of uh, appraisal systems which they have. So, employees were more interested in seeking 
the jobs outside their roles and uh, they were more interested in getting some kind of clarity in terms of the right kind of career paths for them and right kind of feedback mechanism for them. So they started exploring the opportunities outside and many of the organizational members or the employees of the organization even went, uh, they left the organization. Then as about those people who are actually working in the organization, they also started exhibiting low productivity. So employees were not sure of where to focus their efforts and how will they be viewed by the organization. So it led to decreased productivity in the organization and overall the entire organization was facing some challenges related to negative organizational culture. So there was no autonomy in the work systems, there was no openness in the work systems, the, uh, the systems of the organization lacked something called as trust you know because of all these reasons and therefore the culture of mistrust, frustration, complacency you know all these things began to prevail and it further eroded the employees morale also. So these were some of the reasons why people were not uh, I mean these were some of the consequences which the ineffective performance management system of the organization led to. Now we will try to analyze this root cause and we will try to figure out how could they actually work on those issues and make the systems better. So let us start with a uh, few of the things which are related to the analysis of the root cause. We will start with lack of clear performance expectation. So the primary root cause of this kind of uh, situation was the lack of clear expectation. So what can be done to improve uh, the performance expectations, sorry what can be done to uh, improve the clarity in performance expectations. So the organization need to focus on, focus on some areas such as establishing the right kind of business metrics for their employees or performance metrics for the employees. It is important for the organization to set the KRAs for the people in beginning itself. They should be aware of what their sets of duties and responsibilities are and what is expected out of them. Then organizations have to adopt some kind of method such as uh, defining the KPIs for the people and also ensuring that the smart objectives are communicated to pe people in the beginning itself. As I mentioned that there was one of the challenges related to ineffective feedback mechanism. So you need to brainstorm and understand and come up with some kind of solution for such kind of problem. The major reason why the performance management system in the organization was failing was because of the reason that the individuals were not given appropriate feedback. So there has to be some mechanism for providing the appropriate feedback to the employees which does not only mean that we are just providing the feedback to the people and saying that this is your feedback and uh, on the basis of it we are either accepting you or rejecting you but there has to be it has to be a continuous mechanism it has to be a continuous mechanism of improving the performance of people at work and therefore it becomes important for the organization to take care of some good feedback mechanism system like for example constructive feedback mechanism system can be followed. There are n number of systems like for example organizations in order to uh, think on the lines of transparency, transparency and fairness in the organization they may think on the lines of 360 degree feedback mechanism also. So there can be n number of ways by means of which the organization can be benefited and therefore feedback mechanism can really work. So without regular constructive feedback employees will not be able to identify the grey areas and they will not be able to understand where they where do they need to improve upon and if the organization has such kind of feedback mechanism in place they also need to provide the adequate kind of training and development opportunities for people so that they can really improve on the grey areas. The organization also needs to work on the right kind of performance appraisal system. There are some systems which have become completely obsolete or you know one size does not fit all. So any of the uh, performance appraisal there are so, so many performance appraisal processes which are into being but it does not mean that all the performance appraisal processes or all the methods of performance appraisal could fit into a particular organization. So depending upon your need depending upon the organizational need the organization has to chalk out the right kind of performance appraisal method for itself and they need to hone the capabilities of employees so that they get, get ample opportunities to grow in their careers 
and to develop themselves so that they don't feel undervalued and stagnated as well so this was all about the performance management next we move to the aspect related to performance appraisal now it's important for us to understand what is performance appraisal so when we talk about performance appraisal it is the if you go by the definition it is the process of evaluating the employees job performance and overall contribution of the to the organization typically by their managers or supervisors it involves setting clear performance expectations it's about regularly assessing the employees achievements it's about continuously providing them the feedback it's about discussing the opportunities for growth of improvement and the primary goal of performance appraisal is to align individual performance with the organizational objectives so it is the crux of what gary desler has uh, rightly pointed towards actually compels us to think on the lines of whatever we have discussed so far so performance appraisal is is the process of evaluating the job performance of employee and overall contribution to an organization typically by the manager or supervisors but these days we have n number of such processes into play and n number of such uh, mechanisms into play which help us in uh, you know understanding the performance level level of an employee and their assessment not just by their managers alone this used to be a traditional kind of system wherein only the manager used to evaluate the performance but these days we have come up with some such systems which focus on you know 360 degree kind of mechanisms so this was about uh, the performance uh, you know performance appraisal now uh, before we delve deeper into you know how performance appraisal looks and what are the various aspects related to performance uh, appraisal i'll just talk about a few industry practices you know uh, for different aspects of performance management uh, wherein we'll be focusing on certain key areas related to continuous communication and coaching of the employees so how can organization actually gain uh, that momentum and how the organization can actually think on the lines of improving its performance management process is by setting the clear goals and objectives for its employees it's about providing the right kind of feedback to the people by constructively telling them about what needs to be done and providing them frequent as well as timely kind of feedback mechanism uh then there has to be a two way communication so that there is no line which is drawn between the employer and employee and if an employee is facing some kind of troubles related to an issue or the other he can directly communicate with the employer and definitely there has to be some kind of positive reinforcement also when it comes to conducting the appraisals appraisals also need to be handled very very carefully there has to be a very robust mechanism for ensuring the appraisal management like for example fairness and transparency needs to be ensured then there has to be some kind of regularity that needs to be ensured development focus has to be there and also the managers need to be trained on how the performance appraisal has to happen at times you know organizations even stress on uh, involving the employees in uh, the entire process of uh, performance management for example we have a system called as uh, mbo management by objective which is about joint goal setting by the employer as well as employee so you know in this method in mbo what happens is the employer and employee or the manager as well as the employee uh the subordinate and supervisor they jointly set the goals for them so that uh, there is some element of fairness in goal setting and the individual also needs about the expectations from him right in the beginning itself now uh, this was all about performance appraisal and i i think uh, you must have understood i mean this is the definition of performance appraisal surely we are going to talk about some of the important areas of performance appraisal also so i think by now you have fair understanding of the fact that performance appraisal has something to do with evaluating the performance of an individual with ref, uh, with respect to the job he is performing at a certain point of time so it can be by anyone and uh, any stakeholder 
Now that we have some understanding of performance appraisal, it is important for us to understand that how this process actually happens. So, when it comes to performance appraisal, there are different methods which can be used. We can use one method, we can use multiple methods, we can use you know blend of various methods for the purpose of performance appraisal. So, here I have brought before you a few of the methods both traditional as well as the modern methods uh, of performance appraisal. So, let us get started. The very first method is narrative or essay appraisal. Now, what is this method all about? The person who assesses the performance of an individual is called as appraiser and the person who you know who uh, gets appraised for the performance is appraising. So, in this method the appraiser writes a narrative, he is supposed to write a narrative describing the strengths, weaknesses, achievements and area of improvement. So, what does the appraiser do? Appraiser is supposed to make a narrative he is supposed to write a narrative describing describing the strengths of employee, the weaknesses of employees, the achievement that an individual has had and also the areas for improvement. So, this is a very uh, simple method in which he offers a detailed qualitative assessments, assessment of the employees making it suitable for employees in roles where the objective of the it may you know it offers a very detailed qualitative assessment for the employees making it suitable for employees in role where subjective judgment plays a very significant role. So, when it comes to subjective judgment certainly this kind of method can really fit in very well, but I would not say that this is the only method or this is the method which should always be followed you know there can be a blend of methods which can be followed. Because there is one disadvantage associated with this method and it is the fact that this method lacks objectivity. So, the in order to make the performance management system very robust, it is important to add the element of objectivity to it. Then we have another method called as graphic rating scales method. So, this method employs a very standardized scale where employees are rated on a scale of 1 to 5 or certain things and uh, they are uh, basically rated on certain dimensions. It may be in terms of quality of work, it may be in terms of efficiency of the employee, it may be in terms of uh, the kind of uh, you know uh, the kind of criticality involved, it may be in terms of uh, the uh, you know the, the skills involved etcetera. So, there can be various uh, you know there can be various dimensions on which an individual may be assessed or you may say there may be a number of competencies on which the individual may be assessed as a part of this method. And usually this uh, involves a standardized scale uh, which would mean some kind of scale can be used some kind of inventory can be used to keep a tap on the employees performance. So, the appraiser is supposed to give some kind, of some kind of scores to the people based on the predefined criteria. The criteria is given to the people well in advance and uh, you know they are then assessed making it a straightforward method for evaluation. It is very easy to administer and one of the major advantages associated with this, it is the fact that it is quantitative in nature and uh, this is one reason why it allows for numerical comparisons. So, this is about graphing rating scales. So, we are done with two methods, the next method is what you call as 360 degree feedback. It is a very interesting method, probably some of you who have gone through several methods of appraisal are even aware of what 360 degree feedback mechanism is all about and how beautifully organizations are implementing such kind of feedback mechanism or say such kind of appraisal method. Now, in this method 
employees are assessed not only by the immediate superior which used to happen in conventional settings and which used to happen in a very traditional uh, you know in very traditional systems but these days it is felt that it is not only the manager or supervisor who can assess the individual on certain aspect but there is a dire need to assess the individual on certain parameters by the supervisors peers then subordinates also so it's very interesting subordinates and sometimes some external stakeholders for example the customer feedback with respect to a particular employee may be taken into consideration so as to understand certain aspects related to his performance at work so this method offers a very comprehensive view of an employee's performance and therefore it's very effective also because uh, it encourages feedback promotes employee development and also requires you know at times it requires uh, a lot of time because so many stakeholders are involved so many people are to be you know asked about the performance of an individual so it is a little time consuming at times and requires careful interpretation of the varied feedback so this is again a very important method next method is what you call as management by objectives so it's a very goal oriented method of performance appraisal as mentioned above it is the employees and their managers you know they collaboratively set the specific measurable and achievable objectives and finally decide on the lines of uh, what is expected out of the individuals so performance is assessed based on how well the employee meet those goals so the employee is himself aware of uh, the uh, goal in the beginning itself at right at the time of setting the goal so it becomes easy for him to you know work according to the expectation set so this was about management by objectives and uh, next we have something called as behaviorally anchored rating scale which is also called as bars method this method of performance appraisal combines the narrative and quantitative methods so it's basically a culmination of the narrative method or narrative and uh, quantitative methods so as uh, in you know in narratives or appraisal is essay appraisal method the employee was supposed to write the narrative so it's about a combination of narrative method and the quantitative method and what happens is they start by defining the specific behavioral examples of performance criteria now it is the appraiser who rate the employees based on these behavioral characteristics or behavioral anchors which they call as which provide a more precise evaluation compared to a traditional rating system so this is about behaviorally anchored rating scale a lot of preparation is needed a lot of time is needed but it offers a very detailed and a very objective assessment of the individual and this is called as behaviorally anchored rating scale after behaviorally anchored rating scales we have another method called as critical incidents method in this method you know the appraiser keeps a record of some notable events or incidents in which the employee excelled or faced challenges so all those things are made a note of they are documented throughout the process and discussed during the review process for example in an organization a fire breaks out how does an individual take the cognizance of such kind of situation so if he he does some kind of heroic deed at the time and he tries uh, you know and he tries and helps people evacuate the uh, affected area this may be taken as a very good sign and this may be taken as a, as a very uh, good act of the employee to show his altruism 
So, critical incidents appraisal method is all about noting down such kind of critical incidents and recording those notable events uh, which happened during the period and then providing a comprehensive review. It offers specific examples and can be used in conjunction with some other methods also, but it requires a lot of you know uh, diligent record keeping. So, we are through with uh, 5 methods, 6 methods of uh, performance appraisal. Now, next is forced distribution method. It is also called as forced ranking method. So, it is as the name itself suggests, it is about forced distribution or forced ranking. So, in this method, uh, the employees are categorized into various groups. For example, the organization may define certain groups of employees and they may decide in the beginning itself that some of the employees are going to be high performers, some of them are going to be low performers, some of them are going to be average performers, some of them are going to be very, very low performers, some of them are going to be you know uh, very high performers. So, this is a kind of forced distribution method, uh, it forces managers to allocate a fixed percentage of employees into each category promoting differentiation. So, at times it may lead to a lot of frustration among the employees also, because uh, there may be a cli clear line of distinction between you know those people who are maybe very very competent and still being placed in the category because of the restriction of putting them in certain categories or maybe uh, because of the obligation of putting them in certain categories. Another method, yet another method for performance appraisal is what we call as self assessment or peer assessment method. So, self assessment method, what happens in this method is employees evaluate their own performance and they provide self appraisal. In peer assessment, employees receive feedback and also they get some kind of ratings for, from their colleagues. Yet another method which is gaining momentum these days is self assessment method. So, organizations even promote the employees these days to self assess themselves, so that they are better aware of themselves and they are aware of uh, how to how to work on certain systems and they by means of these methods uh, a lot of collaborations can also happen. Then we have cost accounting method. It focuses on assessing the cost effectiveness of the employee performance, which would mean it evaluates the employee's contribution in terms of the cost associated, the cost savings, the employee revenue generation and efficiency improvements also. Next is ranking and paired comparison method. In the ranking method, the employees are ranked from worst, uh, you know, best to worst based on their performance levels and when it comes to paired comparison methods it is all comparing each employee to every other employee so it's a very cumbersome and very time consuming process then we have something called as behavioral observation a uh, behavioral observation is also a method but then uh, it normally works with any other method so when we are using this behavioral observation method it cannot work in xylos, it cannot work alone, you have to make use of some other method also to evaluate the performance. So, the appraiser observes and records the employee's behavior and performance during their daily work. It is especially valuable for roles wherein some specific behaviors are critical to the success of the organization, such as customer services, you know, maybe sales related jobs, they are supposed to be keep you know they are supposed to be kept a track on on regular basis so behavioral observation is yet another method checklist method they are predefined lists what are checklists they are predefined lists of performance criteria and uh, the appraiser checks off the items which they feel uh, have been met or that apply to the employees performance so, this was all about performance appraisal, we have uh, done a lot of methods related to performance appraisals. Uh, in today's lecture, we talked about you know the various uh, methods by means of which we can appraise the performance of an employee. 
we've also talked about certain key components of performance management and uh, towards the end i would just like to shed some light on two organizations which have successfully implemented their performance management systems so the very first organization that i'm going to talk about is google so google is one such organization which is known to be having some of the best hr practices they hire the best of the talents after multiple rounds of interviews and that too in a very scientific way right from training them right and uh, making sure that they are uh, you know they learn a lot google ensures that its employees perform to the best of their capabilities and what do they do they conduct several annual performance reviews with mid term sorry with mid year checkpoints also so it's not only that they are uh, i mean it's not that they are just checking the uh, review of the individuals or they are do doing the review of an individual after the completion of a year but they also make sure there is some kind of mid checkpoints which are ensured and also the monthly performance check ins are ensured that covers topic like performance appraisals you know they even cover some of the important aspects like professional growth of the individuals then coaching personal difficulties they are facing and uh, beside these mid checkpoints and uh, you know monthly reviews of the individuals they also have a system of upward feedback survey which is something similar to you know 360 degree performance appra appraisal it re relies on certain objectives and key result areas for its performance management initiatives so this is one organization which has successfully implemented this there are n number of organizations in fact most of the successful organizations have to put a lot of emph emphasis on ensuring that they manage their performance well and managing the human resources and for managing the uh, human resources it's very important to manage the performance of the individuals right then another example that i would like to uh, take up here is ibm so it follows a performance management system that enables its employees to bring their entire selves to the organization thereby driving the creativity and connection uh, in 2016 they uh, they moved from yearly absolute evolutions uh, sorry in the year 2016 only they moved from a very uh, yearly kind of appraisal systems to a model where feedback is self driven and uh, they focus primarily on bringing more holistic kind of evaluation of employees so that the holistic development of the employees is also ensured with this we come to the end of today's lecture and uh, these are few of the references that were used for this presentation thank you